What's going on guys, it's Alex, and today we're gonna to be talking about the Mac M1 Mini. I've been using this device for the last couple months now, coming from a 2013 MacBook Air, which was actually still my main laptop, even though I have an iPad Pro here. I can tell you that that device was kind of old at this point. It was kind of old, it needed an upgrade, and I didn't wanna dish out you know, upwards of $1,000 for a new Mac machine. Not necessarily you can get a MacBook Air, but I wanted a desktop Mac experience. And the iMac is a great system right now, but I don't wanna spend like 1300 bucks or 1400 bucks. So I went ahead and checked out the Apple refurbished program and was met with a pretty eye-opening experience. So we can go on and discuss how great a $3,000 laptop is or how good a $2,000 laptop is, but when you really look into what Apple is offering these Mac minis at, at the refurbished level, you start to realize how much of a great deal this is. And things get interesting when you talk about Apple and specs. If we look at the iPhone, a lot of times it's gonna lose when it comes to spec sheets compared to Android devices, which is why you'll see lower battery life, lower amounts of RAM. And same goes with the M1 lineup. You're not seeing an astronomical amount of battery size on a spec sheet, but you're still getting ridiculous battery life that is rivaling, if not destroying, some of the top Windows laptops. So we have no astronomical battery size. We don't have crazy amounts of RAM. We have an eight gig setup, a 16 gig setup, and that's usually how Apple rolls with it. They've done it with their phones, and now they're doing it with all their computers, and Apple excels at doing this. Like, imagine building a new PC with eight gigs of RAM, and then going on to say, wow, this computer flies. I can open up a ton of tabs, everything works perfectly, and it runs amazing. Like nowadays, even if you're building a standard computer or a gaming computer, eight gigs of RAM just really doesn't cut it. But then again, we're seeing a lot of these Macs destroying and kicking butt in performance with eight gigs of RAM. Obviously, Apple can get away with doing this because they've had time to learn from making mobile chips on the iPhone and the iPad. The whole integration of hardware and software, Apple is able to basically create this very smooth balance of power and efficiency. And you're really seeing it when it comes to battery life on these new M1 systems. When you really think about it, did you ever see Apple dive into specs in the launch event? Not really, you basically saw a pretty vague graph letting you know that the M1 is much better than the latest PC laptop chip. Apple presents information this way. They also seem to be going into the future with the same mindset of presenting information this way. But how does this all translate into the actual user experience? Like how does all the hype over the last year actually translate into what you will experience? I'd say the first thing is price. Now you can obviously go ahead and pick up a MacBook Air or a MacBook Pro. And I think that's where the majority of people are going to stand. Then again, you could also get the new iMac, which is also a pretty great deal considering the screen and performance you're getting. But if you're looking for a great deal and don't necessarily need a laptop or a monitor, the M1 Mac Mini might possibly be one of the best deals you can get from Apple right now. It retails for $699, which is the cheapest entry-level M1 Mac that you can pick up right now. But if you head over to Apple's refurbished website, you might be tempted to pick up the same model for $589. Using this Mac Mini daily alongside Big Sur, you'd even expect the eight gigabytes of RAM to have an issue. Maybe, you know, start to clog up when you have a lot of tabs open. However, this thing has flown through everything, especially with Safari's optimization, animations stay consistent, inputs are responsive, and everything feels pretty buttery. I haven't really ever picked up a refurbished Apple product before, so I imagine if you were saving $110, there would be some sort of sacrificing. But in my experience, literally nothing. When I opened the box, I thought there was gonna be some, you know, visible scratches that you usually get sometimes with refurbished products, but it looked like a brand new Apple device. No scuffs, micro scratches, Nothing looked out of the ordinary, especially considering that it's a refurbished device. And the performance is top tier, essentially destroying every previous Intel Mac in single core score while scoring in the top percentage of machines that cost thousands of dollars more in multi-core score. I've used this Mac for video editing 6K footage and it holds up like a champ in DaVinci Resolve, which was optimized for Big Sur and even using ProRes files in Final Cut, not many headaches or hiccups when editing video. Even the drive performance is pretty awesome. I was seeing three gigs about read and write speed, give or take on the internal SSD. 
And while you will sacrifice some of the internal storage by choosing the 256 gig model, you can go ahead and pick up some external SSDs like these from Samsung. While there's tons of options where you can get a terabyte of SSD storage for pretty cheap, opening and transferring video files and even raw footage has been a breeze on the Mac Mini. In the speedy drive, I found image editing, video editing, opening applications, everything to be very fast and very smooth throughout the entire process. I found the Mac mini to have excellent cooling to the point where I don't even really hear the internal fan kicking on on this thing. And because of the larger chassis, it does have the ability to have more efficient cooling than some of the M1 chips in the laptops. And if you don't need a 5K screen or a laptop, like I've said before, and you want a great budget option that allows you to transition into Apple Silicon, I think this is a great starting point for a lot of people. You can also pick up a solid compatible keyboard and a mouse that work great with Mac OS and even support multi-device switching if you have an iPad and want to hop from device to device without any Bluetooth issues. Okay, Alex, what are the downsides? Where or what are the issues with buying a refurbished Mac mini? So the things that I did see reported before I wanted to buy one of these was some Bluetooth issues, meaning Bluetooth connectivity was a little finicky sometimes, but apparently some of the last updates have fixed these problems. The one thing we have to keep in mind is that these M1 chips are generation one hardware. So I'd say that last year, the biggest downside was app compatibility. Big Sur had just launched alongside the M1s. Everyone was introduced into this new platform and no one really knew how the transition phase would would go. However, as time has gotten better throughout this year, we've seen a lot of apps starting to transition to this platform. Even the apps that still haven't been perfectly optimized for the M1s still run pretty good in my experience. You can also run Rosetta, so you can get your Intel-based applications on the M1. With my current usage, like I said before, I was basically doing just web browsing and video editing, which gets pretty intense when you're dealing with like 6K raw footage. And these Macs have really been able to do it. I haven't had any massive hiccups with DaVinci Resolve, which is the program that I use specifically. I can't speak for Final Cut, but Final Cut is native to Apple, so I would assume that Final Cut isn't really gonna have that many issues either. After several months of using the Mac Mini, I absolutely feel like this device has enough power and compatibility to use it as my daily computer. Not as a secondary device, but as my straight up, you know, go-to workstation. Gigabit Ethernet is great. Port selection is pretty solid considering it's from Apple and having an HDMI for an external monitor without needing any additional dongles is also an added benefit. I've always wanted a Mac mini or an iMac, but I didn't want to spend all this extra money for like a secondary computer. And with the M1X or M2 chip coming out probably in October, these Mac minis are a great option for people who want a budget option. But if you are looking for the cutting edge, you know, best computer, I would say probably wait to see some news until October. From there, we'll have a better idea of what's gonna happen to the M1 platform or into transitioning into the M2s or M1X, whatever Apple decides to call it. But these nonetheless are really fast. And even when Apple decides to make the next Mac minis with their next generation platform, they're still gonna be great. They're still gonna be great, you're still gonna have great power, and for the price, you really can't beat it. I think we can get an idea that building a Windows machine with this much power for 600 bucks is a bit unrealistic. But hey, if you don't mind Mac OS or switching to Apple, I think this is honestly one of the best deals when it comes to performance per dollar. Assuming you don't play games, of course. Gaming and Apple, pfft, no. So, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching, if you liked the video, Leave a comment down below, leave a thumbs up if you want, subscribe if you haven't. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.